Qutbism, also called Qutbism, Qutbia, or Qutbia, is an Islamist ideology developed by Sayyid Qutb, the figurehead of the Muslim Brotherhood. It has been described as advancing the extremist jihadist ideology of propagating offensive jihad, waging jihad in conquest, or armed jihad in the advance of Islam. Qutbism has gained widespread attention because it is widely believed to have influenced Islamic extremists and terrorists such as Osama bin Laden. Muslim extremists cite Sayyid Qutb repeatedly and consider themselves his intellectual descendants. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Terminology. Like the term Wahhabi, Qutb is used not by the alleged proponents to describe themselves, but by their critics. Topic. Tenets The main tenet of Qutbist ideology is that the Muslim community or the Muslim community outside of a vanguard fighting to re-establish it has been extinct for a few centuries, having reverted to godless ignorance jahiliya, and must be reconquered for Islam. Qutb outlined his ideas in his book Malam Fayel Tariq aka Milestones. Important principles of Qutbism include Adherence to Sharia as sacred law accessible to humans, without which Islam cannot exist. Adherence to Sharia as a complete way of life that will bring not only justice, but peace, personal serenity, scientific discovery, complete freedom from servitude, and other benefits. Avoidance of Western and non Islamic evil and corruption, including socialism, nationalism, and consumerist capitalism. Vigilance against Western and Jewish conspiracies against Islam. A two-pronged attack of one, preaching to convert and two, jihad to forcibly eliminate the structures of jihiliya. The importance of offensive jihad to eliminate jihiliya not only from the Islamic homeland but from the face of the earth. Topic: <laughs> Takfirism. The most controversial aspect of Qutbism is takfir, Qub's idea that Islam is extinct. According to Takfir, with the exception of Qub's Islamic vanguard, those who call themselves Muslims are not actually Muslim. Takfir was intended to shock Muslims into religious rearmament. When taken literally, Takfir also had the effect of causing non Qutbists who claimed to be Muslim in violation of Sharia law, a law that Qutb very much supported. Violating this law could potentially be considered apostasy from Islam, a crime punishable by death according to Qutbis. Because of these serious consequences, Muslims have traditionally been reluctant to practice takfir, that is, to pronounce professed Muslims as unbelievers, even Muslims in violation of Islamic law. This prospect of fitna, or internal strife, between Qutbists and takfir ed. Mainstream Muslims, was put to Qutb by prosecutors in the trial that led to his execution, and is still made by his Muslim detractors. Qutb died before he could clear up the issue of whether Jahiliya referred to the whole Muslim world, to only Muslim governments, or only in an allegorical sense, but a serious campaign of terror, or physical power and jihad, against the organizations and authorities of Jahili. Egypt, by insurgents observers believed to be influenced by Qutb followed in the 1980s and 1990s, victims included Egyptian President Anwar Sadat, head of the counter-terrorism police Major General Raouf Krat, parliamentary speaker Rifat El Margu, dozens of European tourists and Egyptian bystanders, and over 100 Egyptian police officers. Other factors, such as economic dislocation, stagnation and rage over President Sadat's policy of reconciliation with Israel, played a part in instigating the violence, but Qub's takfir against Jahiliya or Jahili society, and his passionate belief that Jahiliya government was irredeemably evil, played a key role. History Topic. Spread of Qub's ideas Qub's message was spread through his writing, his followers and especially through his brother, Muhammad Qutb, who moved to Saudi Arabia following his release from prison in Egypt and became a professor of Islamic studies and edited, published and promoted his brother Sayyid's work. 
Ayman al-Zawahiri, who went on to become a member of the Egyptian Islamic Jihad, was one of Muhammad Qub's students and later a mentor of Osama bin Laden and a leading member of al-Qaeda, and had been first introduced to Sayyad Qutb by his uncle, Mahfuz Azam, who had been very close to Sayyad Qutb throughout his life and impressed on al-Zawahiri, "...the purity of Qub's character and the torment he had endured in prison." Zawahiri paid homage to Qutb in his work Nights Under the Prophet's Banner. Qutbism was considered propagated by Abdullah Azam during the war between the Soviet and Afghan Mujahideens. In the scene of the war, Qutbism had merged with Salafism and Wahhabism, culminating in the formation of Salafi Jihadism. Abdullah Azam was a mentor of bin Laden as well. Osama bin Laden is reported to have regularly attended weekly public lectures by Muhammad Qutb, at King Abdulaziz University, and to have read and been deeply influenced by Sayyid Qutb. Late Yemeni al Qaeda leader Anwar al Awlaki has also spoken of Qub's great influence and of being so immersed with the author I would feel Sayyid was with me. Speaking to me directly. Backlash Following Qub's death Qutbist ideas spread throughout Egypt and other parts of the Arab and Muslim world, prompting a backlash by more traditionalist and conservative Muslims, such as the book Dua, Lakuda Preachers, Not Judges 1969. The book, written by MB Supreme Guide Hassan al Hudaybi, attacked the idea of takfir of other Muslims but was ostensibly targeted not at Qutb but at Maududi, as al Hudaybi had been a friend and supporter of Qutb. Views Science and learning On the importance of science and learning, the key to the power of his beat noir, Western civilization, Qutb was ambivalent. He wrote that Muslims have drifted away from their religion and their way of life, and have forgotten that Islam appointed them as representatives of God and made them responsible for learning all the sciences and developing various capabilities to fulfill this high position which God has granted them, and encouraged Muslims to seek knowledge. A Muslim can go to a Muslim or to a non-Muslim to learn abstract sciences such as chemistry, physics, biology, astronomy, medicine, industry, agriculture, administration limited to its technical aspects, technology, military arts and similar sciences and arts, although the fundamental principle is that when the Muslim community comes into existence it should provide experts in all these fields in abundance, as all these sciences and arts are a sufficient obligation fard al on Muslims that is to say, there ought to be a sufficient number number of people who specialize in these various sciences and arts to satisfy the needs of the community. Qutb, Milestones p. 109 On the other hand, Qutb believed some learning was forbidden to Muslims and should not be studied, including Principles of economics and political affairs and interpretation of historical processes Origin of the universe, the origin of the life of man Philosophy, comparative religion Sociology excluding statistics and observations Darwinist biology which goes beyond the scope of its observations, without any rhyme or reason and only for the sake of expressing an opinion Qutb, Milestones pp. 108–10 and that the era of scientific discovery that non-Muslim Westerners were so famous for was now over The period of resurgence of science has also come to an end. This period, which began with the Renaissance in the 16th century after Christ and reached its zenith in the 18th and 19th centuries, does not possess a reviving spirit. Qutb, Milestones p. 8. However important scientific discovery was, or is, an important tool to achieve it and to do everything else is to follow Sharia law under which blessings fall on all mankind, and leads in an easy manner to the knowledge of the secrets of nature, its hidden forces and the treasures concealed in the expanses of the universe. Qutb, Milestones p. 90 <laughs> Sharia Qutbism postulates that Sharia-based society will have an almost supernatural perfection, providing justice, prosperity, peace and harmony both individually and societally. 
Its wonders are such that the use of offensive jihad to spread Sharia Islam throughout the non-Muslim world will not be aggression but a movement to introduce true freedom to mankind. It frees humanity from servitude to man because its divine nature requires no human authorities to judge or enforce its law. Conspiracy Qutbism emphasizes what it sees as evil designs of Westerners and Jews against Islam, and the importance of Muslims not trusting or imitating them. Non-Muslims Other elements of Qutbism deal with non-Muslims, particularly Westerners, and have drawn attention and controversy from their subjects, particularly following the September 11, 2001 attacks. Though their terminology, issues and arguments are different from those of the Islamic traditionalists, Westerners also have criticism to make. The West In Qub's view, for example, Western imperialism is not, as Westerners would have Muslims believe, only an economic exploitation of weak peoples by the strong and greedy. Nor were the medieval crusades, as some historians claim, merely an attempt by Christians to reconquer the formerly Christian-ruled, Christian holy land. Some historians have disagreed because the crusaders slaughtered Arab Christians too. Both were different expressions of the West's pronounced enmity towards Islam, including plans to demolish the structure of Muslim society. Imperialism is a mask for the crusading spirit. Examples of Western malevolence Qutb personally experienced and related to his readers include an attempt by a drunken, semi-naked American agent to seduce him on his voyage to America, and the alleged celebration of American hospital employees upon hearing of the assassination of Egyptian Ikhwan Supreme Guide Hassan al Banna. Qub's Western critics have questioned whether Qutb was likely to arouse interest of American intelligence agents, as he was not a member of the Egyptian government or any political organization at that time, or whether many Americans, let alone hospital employees, knew who Hassan al Banna or the Muslim Brotherhood were in 1948. Jews The other anti-Islamic conspirator group, according to Qutb, is «World Jewry», which he believes is engaged in tricks to eliminate «faith and religion» and trying to divert «the wealth of mankind» into «Jewish financial institutions» by charging interest on loans. Jewish designs are so pernicious, according to Qub's logic, that Anyone who leads this Islamic community away from its religion and its Quran can only be a Jewish agent, causing one critic to claim that the statement apparently means that any source of division, anyone who undermines the relationship between Muslims and their faith is by definition a Jew. <laughs> Western corruption Qutbism emphasizes a claimed Islamic moral superiority over the West, according to Islamist values. One example of the filth and rubbish heap of the West, Qutb, Milestones, p. 139, was the animal like mixing of the sexes. Qutb states that while he was in America, a young woman told him, The issue of sexual relations is purely a biological matter. You Complicate this matter by imposing the ethical element on it. The horse and mare, the bull and the cow. Do not think about this ethical matter. And, therefore, live a comfortable, simple, and easy life. Critics complain that this opinion was wildly unrepresentative and the incident highly improbable. Even at the height of the sexual revolution in America 30 years later, most Americans would disagree with his statement, but at the time of his visit to America, sex out of wedlock, let alone animal-like promiscuity, was rare, with the overwhelming number of Americans married as virgins or that only had premarital sex with their future spouse. Topic. Criticism <laughs> 
Topic: <laughs> By Muslims. While Malam Fi El Tariq Arabic, Malm Fi El Tariq milestones was Qub's manifesto, other elements of Qutbism are found in his works Al Adla Al Aitamiya Fi El Islam Arabic, Adl Al Ijmaat Fi El Islam Social Justice in Islam, and his Quranic commentary Fi Zilal Al Quran Arabic, Fi Zilal Al Quran in the Shade of the Quran. Ideas in or alleged to be in those works also have come under attack from both traditionalist conservative Muslims. They include proposals to redistribute income and property to the needy. Opponents claim they are «socialist» and innovations of Islam. Describing Moses as having an «excitable nature», this allegedly being «mockery» and «mockery of the prophets is apostasy in its own», according to Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn Baz. Dismissing fiqh or the schools of Islamic law known as madhab as separate from Islamic principles and Islamic understanding. Qutb may now be facing criticism representing his ideas' success or Qutbism's logical conclusion as much as his ideas' failure to persuade some critics. Writing before the Islamic revival was in full bloom, Qutb sought Islamically correct alternatives to European ideas like Marxism and socialism and proposed Islamic means to achieve the ends of social justice and equality, redistribution of private property, political revolution. But according to Olivier Roy, contemporary, neo-fundamentalists refuse to express their views in modern terms borrowed from the West. They consider indulging in politics, even for a good cause, will by definition lead to bitter and shirk the giving of priority to worldly considerations over religious values. There are, however, some commentators who display an ambivalence towards him, and Roy notes that his books are found everywhere and mentioned on most neo-fundamentalist websites, and arguing his mystical approach, quote, comma, quote, radical contempt and hatred for the West, and pessimistic views on the modern world have resonated with these Muslims. <laughs> Relation to Muslim Brotherhood Controversy over Qutbism is in part an expression of the disagreement of two of the main tendencies of the Islamic revival, the more quiet Salafi Muslims, and the more politically active Muslim groups associated with the Muslim Brotherhood. The group Qutb was a member of for about the last decade and a half of his life. Although Sayyid Qutb was never head, or supreme guide, of the Muslim Brotherhood, he was the Brotherhood's leading intellectual editor of its weekly periodical, and a member of the highest branch in the Brotherhood, the Working Committee and of the Guidance Council. After the publication of Malam Fi El Tariq milestones, opinion in the Brotherhood split over his ideas, though many in Egypt including extremists outside the Brotherhood and most Muslim brothers in other countries are said to have shared his analysis, to one degree or another. However, the leadership of the Brotherhood, led by Hassan al hudaybi remained moderate and interested in political negotiation and activism. By the 1970s, the Brotherhood had renounced violence as a means of achieving its goals. In recent years his ideas have been embraced by Islamic extremist groups, while the Muslim Brotherhood has tended to serve as the official voice of moderate Islamism. <laughs> 